Hey, what's happening? Paul Ingram here with College Center. In today's training, we're going to be taking a look how these translate to using just these. One of the biggest questions that I get in uh, Filipino martial arts is, hey Paul, do you guys ever train the empty hands? And when I respond to this question, a lot of people are very kind of, uh, you know, I guess dumbfounded, lack of better term, that uh, when I say we're always training the empty hands, the empty hands derive directly off of the weapon. Kali is not a weapon-based art. Kali is a weapon art. And the empty hands of Kali, at least here at Kali Center, our frame of mind, is that the empty hands is a weapon area of Kali. We do not look at the empty hands as something different, as something separate. It is part of Kali, it's the sixth area of Kali, and we're taking these hands, we're taking our natural weapons, our natural hand, our tools, and we're turning them into weapons. So let's go ahead and take a look. How do these knife techniques actually translate to the empty hand skills? In Kali, you can really take any of the areas of Kali, the single stick, the double stick, the espadia daga, the knife, the double knife, the empty hands. You can take the spear, the staff, the oar, and you can transfer this information to the empty hands. And you can look at how everything translates with each other. So a lot of our empty hands, where the power comes from is the impact training, the impact weapon training, and then the speed training really comes off the blades, or especially comes off of the knives. So let's go ahead and take a look. In Kali, we have two empty hand fighting methods. We have the closed hand or the fist method, and we also have the open hand method as well. In the comments, leave me a comment down below. Which method do you prefer? Do you prefer striking with the closed fist? like a punch or a hammer fist? Or do you prefer striking with the open hand like a finger jab and the powerful slaps? All right, let's go ahead and get into it number one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and break down four different very basic drills with the knife and show you how those basic drills work in the empty hands world. So from here, we're gonna start off in our forward grip. In the forward grip, this would translate to our closed fist strikes. So from here, we have our one and our two, okay? One and two. Now, you're gonna notice something here that when we're, when we're thrusting in this manner here, you look at how tight our elbows are, boom, right here, okay? So we are not thrusting in a manner where our elbows are out like this, okay? They're down. All right, we can even change leads. Okay, right there. So how does that translate to the empty hands? Very simple, this is our jab and our rear hand straight, right here. Again, making sure that those elbows are in, okay? We do not want to flare those elbows. And yes, people can come up from underneath and all that, but you know, the reason is that you don't want anybody getting underneath your knives right here. And you have all these other types of tactics that you can follow up with to cover the center line if they attempt to. All right, in the reverse grip, we can also utilize our jabbing type of thrusts. So we have our jab right here, number one. Boom, single jab, pop, pop, pop. Now because we're utilizing the reverse grip, it's very weird to keep that uh, elbow down. Plus, there's other, there's other reasons that we have it uh, kind of out a little bit. But from here, we can sometimes go horizontal plane or we go on the diagonal plane. So this is our single jab right here, okay? We could also work that on the left-hand side as well. Boom, pop, pop, right? You can kind of jab low, you can jab high, right? Just like, uh, you know, in boxing, jab low, jab high, right? All those types of things. And then we also have our double jab where we come out one, two, right here. One, two, one, two, one, two. We can start off with the right hand, double jab it, or the left hand double jab. We can do the whole little hand roll thing or you don't have to do the hand roll thing, right? There's reasons why you would do it and then there's reasons why in times when you wouldn't do it. 
But again, we have that single jab and the double jab on the reverse grip. Let's take a look at how that translates to the empty hands. Now on the reverse grip, we would be modifying to the empty hands with our open hand strikes. So we can come out with our open handed jab right here. Now a couple different things you can do. This could be like an eye jab or an eye sweep, something like that, where you're looking to insert the fingers, kind of cut your way into the eyes, like kind of thrust, jab your way into the eyes right here, or you can kind of sweep it, flick them into the eyes, or you can use kind of more the knife edge or the palm right here, boom, right, to kind of smash them right in the bridge of the eyes or kind of blur their vision. A lot of times it's done with the knife, you take their vision away and then you come up underneath. All right, but we have that single hand jab followed up by the double jab right here. One, two, one, two, one, two. Comes up underneath. Top, comes up underneath for that second jab right there. Bop, boom, boom. And again, you can do the hand rolling thing or, or not. This is really good for those moments, especially when you know, you're kind of more in a natural posture. You're kind of like, you know, talking, whatever. Something catches your attention. Something comes, you know, flying in or you need to attack or something. And you can very quickly start to uh, maneuver in multiple directions. A little bit harder to do that with the jab, right? Because you got to take the time to close your hands and then turn and face your opponent. Because of the linear nature of these jabs, it's very hard to fight or maneuver on more of the triangle method. Not impossible, it's just harder. It's a little bit slower on that. So with our different types of jabbing techniques here, right, we can really jab all around this 360 degrees. All right, so these next two, they're actually very much the same. We're just looking at how are we translating the energy of the knife. So from here, we have our one and our two slash on the right hand and our one and our two slash on the left hand. So we can work this out, okay? One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. On the forward grip, that is symbolizing the hammer fist right here, the closed fist striking. Okay, obviously you can work this with one hand and then you can come into your punches, right, or into your empty, hand, uh, your open hands, that's totally fine. But the basic drill is that we're working our X attacks, closed fist, hammer fists on our right and our left hands. Now we have the exact same motions on the reverse grip as well. So we have our one, two, one, two. Okay, right here. So again, we have that closed fist, hammer fist motion that we can work. You can also work the empty hands, the open hands right here, which is the slapping and the hacking with the forearm. So our number one, we'd be slapping with that hand right here and then coming up and striking, hacking with the forearm. Super, super, super powerful techniques. The hammer fist, the slap, and the hack of the forearm are very powerful techniques and they offer a lot of protection. Whether you want to strike with the hammer fists, that's totally cool or you wanna go more open hand, that's totally cool. The main thing when it comes to these types of X attacks is they offer a lot of protection because you're putting this X right in front of your face right here. Right, one, two. So it makes it a little bit difficult for people to get on in and start attacking that center line, that high line. Not impossible, just a little bit more difficult. And obviously the more training you have, the more time you spend on the drills and sparring and all that, your skill set is going to be higher, right? So you're gonna be able to uh, really utilize these things. Now the other thing with these is that you can also start bringing them low to protect that low line as well. So we can come one, two right here and we can cover this entire, from the head all the way down to the waist, that entire kind of gamut right there. Obviously this comes a lot off of the stick, the bolo, and still works off of the knife. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, yeah, but that's such a big motion, you are leaving yourself open. This is why in Kali, there are multiple, multiple tactics and techniques. 
just like a lot of other martial arts. We have to be ready for many, many different types of situations. And we don't get to always choose the situations that we are in. So obviously if we see somebody that's taking a little bit more of a tight boxer type of stance, we're gonna to wanna to start playing a little bit more of a closed up game. But if you start seeing people start coming out with weapons or multiple opponents, you need to be able to maneuver very differently. Right? It's not necessarily always a closed up game. You have to be able to zone, you have to be able to kind of stack and squeeze up your opponents, and so that way you can start fighting them one on one. And sometimes you have to navigate yourself out of the middle, get to the outside, and then you know you gotta have to deflect some things or take some heat while you're working your way out. And uh, one of the things with Kali is we have the mindset is that the knife is very fast. Most often you're gonna feel it before you see it. So we don't know where those attacks are gonna be coming in. And if we're always tight like this up on top, that means we're losing the awareness of when we need to protect ourselves on the low line. You know, having that a knife coming up into the liver or something like that, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna really slow you down. That's gonna really take you out. So there's times where you do have to come all the way back. And there's times where you're gonna have to come through with multiple different methods, the open hand and also the closed fist. So you have to be able to see when you need to apply which tactic and which technique. Very, very important. We call that the ingenuity of Kali and you only get that if you are training Kali. All right, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you find this useful. Let me know again in the comments which empty hand method do you prefer if you have a preference. Do you prefer those closed jabs or do you prefer more of that open hand? You know, the hammer fist or the slaps and the hacks. And of course, with the hammer fist, you can still hack with the form and all that stuff as well. It really comes down to personal preference or better yet, negotiating in the moment which tactic is gonna be the best one for you to use in that given moment of time. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, especially if you've been watching Kali Center here for a while and you have not subscribed to the channel yet. I was looking at my uh, analytics here on YouTube just the other day and they were saying something like, 70% of our viewers are not subscribed. Come on guys, subscribe already, let's go. Smash that thumbs up button. Again, leave me that comment below. Share this video with your martial arts friends. Head on over to KaliCenter.com and check out our further training that we have right on over there, our different training programs and all that stuff. And then uh, make sure to spend some time on your empty hands and spend some time thinking about the different drills that I've been putting up here for the last many years with the weapons and how can you start translating those drills to the empty hands. All right, I got all the ways. Let's see how creative you can be. And if you're on Instagram, go ahead, put up a little video, tag Collie Center. I'd love to see what you guys are working on and what you come up with. All right, I'll catch you guys next time. Get outside, go train, make nature your Collie Dojo. Most important thing, don't take it too seriously. Make sure you're having fun in your training, all right? I'll see you guys very soon.